The idea is it's something you carry with you always that arms you. Epictetus did say something similar to that. He said, every night, keep thoughts like these at hand, write them, read them aloud, talk to yourself and others about them. The greatest thing in the world would be to know exactly what to do in every situation. Epictetus was asked by a student, what should I do? And he said, don't ask me what you should do. Ask how to be made adaptable to circumstances. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've written a number of books about Stoic philosophy. I've spoken to the NBA and the NFL, sitting senators, but I'm also just a regular human who tries to apply Stoic philosophy in my actual life. And there's a couple of key Stoic practices that are basically true in each and every situation that I try to constantly be reminded of so I can apply whatever I'm doing, whoever I'm with, whatever is going on. I actually have them tattooed on my arms. And in today's episode, I wanna walk you through those tattoos, why these mantras, which in Sanskrit means sacred utterance, why I have these reminders on me, what they mean, how I apply them, and how maybe you can apply them in your own life. And actually, I just got a new Stoic tattoo today. A great Stoic tattoo artist here in Austin, Texas, his name is Andy Foe. He just set up a new shop in Hutto, which is about 45 minutes from my bookstore here. He came out and gave me a four virtues tattoo on my wrist here. So I'm gonna show you what that tattoo process looks like, but I also wanna show you why I have these reminders and what they mean to me. The impediment to action advances action, but stands in the way becomes the way. Basically what he's saying is that each and every situation we face in life is an opportunity to practice virtue or practice excellence in some form. Perhaps not the excellence we wanted, perhaps not what we intended to do, but nevertheless an opportunity to step up, to grow, to learn, to change, to adapt, to be the kind of person that Stoicism wants us to be. After I got Obstacle is the Way, which is when I was writing my first book on Stoic philosophy, the next book I did was Ego is the Enemy. And when the Obstacle is the Way came out and started to do very well, my career was taking off, I'd always been this kind of young kid who was ahead of my years, who was successful, who was doing well, People wanted me to go places. I was being written about. Things were going well, but I was very cognizant of the fact that ego, as Cyril Connolly famous said, sucks us down like the law of gravity. Epictetus famously says, you cannot learn that which you think you already know. Ego being this thing that gets in the way between you and what you're capable of being, between you and doing your best, between you and relationships, between you and objective reality. And so I wanted a reminder, particularly as my career trajectory continued upwards, that I wasn't special, that I wasn't important, that I needed to focus on the process, I needed to do the work, I needed to ignore results entirely and focus, as Epictetus says, on what I control, which is what I put in. In meditations, Marcus Aurelius talks about how when you tie your success to what other people say or do, that's insanity. It's insanity. Sanity is tying it to your own actions, to your own sense of self, to your own values. Sometime in the summer of 2019, I was working on the third book in that trilogy, which was Stillness is the Key. Stillness being when I think about what makes me happiest, when I do my best work, I'm not frantic, I'm not busy, I'm connected, I'm locked in. In meditations, Marcus Aurelius talks over and over again about being present. Stoics and the Epicureans have this word ataraxia, not being disturbed internally or externally, being able to tune out what's going on around you and lock into what's in front of you. Marx Aurelius uses the image of the rock and the ocean, the waves are crashing over it, but it stands still. And he says, eventually the waves fall still around it. And I know that seems more like an Eastern idea, although it's funny because the obstacle is the way, there's also a Zen expression, the obstacle is the path. These mantras are universal. They, they appear in all the different Stoic schools, even in religions. Be still and know that I am God, right? Like slow Slow things down, lock in, tune out what's going on around you. So you can imagine this is the summer of 2019, stillness comes out, I'm just finishing up the tour, going back to normal life, and the pandemic happens, the world becomes both very still and very busy and noisy and scary all at the same time. What we all had to do was reevaluate our lives, reevaluate our habits, reevaluate what was important, find a way to be at peace and focus on what we control within that insanity. And so one very, very minor downside of the pandemic was that I couldn't go get a tattoo for the next series I was starting, which is the Four Virtues series. The Four Virtues, actually, I have them here on the bookstore. Courage, temperance, justice, 
wisdom. These are the cardinal virtues actually of Christianity and of Stoicism. And when I think about the obstacle is the way, when Marcus says that everything is an opportunity to practice virtue, that's what he's talking about. Every situation, even if it's not what you planned, even if it's not what you wanted, even if it's not what you expected, it's a chance for courage. It's a chance to learn. That would be wisdom. It's a chance for temperance, self-discipline, moderation. Often it's an opportunity for justice to make things better for other people, to see what other people need, to do what is right. So I wanted a vivid reminder of that. Actually, the Daily Stoic logo, you've probably seen in our logos, it is the images of the four virtues. Sophia for wisdom, which is an owl, a lion for courage, the scales of justice for justice, and then a man sprinkling water into wine, diluting wine. That's the image of temperance or moderation. One of the weirdest parts of obstacle and stillness and ego, and then the stuff I've talked about, I've done videos about this memento mori at Morfati, is I hear from people who those ideas so resonated with them that they got their own tattoos. The book hit them at a time they needed something or that idea was something they needed a reminder of. And I've seen pictures from people all over the world that have sent these in. And it's been a cool, unique experience. You know, some people have a negative opinion about tattoos. For me, the tattoo is for me. As I was sitting down with Andy, he wanted to put it this way, because that's typically how you would do it. So you could show other people. But the tattoo, as I was saying, I'm like, no, the tattoos, these are reminders for me. These are mantras that I repeat. I'm getting them in my skin so I can't forget about them. I can't make excuses about them. I can't pretend I don't know. I do know, they're right there. But I've seen all these cool tattoos from people all over the world. So if you're thinking about getting a stoke tattoo, I think you should. Obviously rules, laws, health issues aside, but the reminders have been incredibly helpful for me and they've helped me do what stoicism is meant to do, which is not be abstract, not be theoretical, but it's something you actually apply and use and do. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe. But what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily Stoic email, one bit of Stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I've sent it every day for the last six years. And I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.